five biblical proofs we're in the tribulation. We're going to talk about them in this video. And before we do, I just want to say for all the trolls and all the mockers and scoffers that the scriptures talk about, let me ask you, have you dedicated your whole life to the cause of Jesus Christ? Have you sold all you have and followed him for eight years? Have you left working in the world system, working a job for the beast, quit all that and followed the gospel, living for Jesus Christ only for eight years? Have you traveled to 17 countries by faith with no money, no plan? Have you been in prison in five countries? <laughs> Have you uh, been poisoned by Mossad and tracked by CIA, FBI, and MI6? Shin Bet in the 8200. Some of those you don't even know what they are. The simple answer is no, you haven't. Okay? And I tell you all that for the glory of the gospel. Because of the message I'm giving you, the things I'm telling you, is not in, in man, okay? It's not in me to produce the intelligence, to produce the wisdom to show you these five proofs, to show you we're in the tribulation. The Bible says exactly when the tribulation will start with many uh, indicators and timelines. So Daniel said once he interpreted the dream, he said, it is not in me, O king, to give you the interpretation. It is only in the Most High. Okay? And there's one right answer. There's one interpretation of the dream. Okay? So all the, your other magicians and astronomers and all of that, why can they not tell you this one simple thing? Why can they not tell you when the tribulation starts? Okay? Well, we're going to tell you, we're going to show you simply. Now, I know many of you um, hate the state of Israel, that you hate the Jews. On this channel, we don't hate the Jews. We love the Jews. And we know that it was God's hand in 1948 to establish the state of Israel. Okay, that's, it, it, there's no explaining of that, guys. It has to be. It has to be scripture being fulfilled. It has to be the word of God. Okay. You could say it's, you know, all these other things. It doesn't matter. It's our major indicator to tell us when the tribulation starts. Okay? So the most simple prophecy tells us. In Daniel, the book of Daniel tells us. We're going to explain it simply. Okay? So from 1948, it says, Unto 62 weeks will be Messiah, the prince, Mashiach. Okay, so we know Mashiach is the Lord Jesus Christ. So in this whole video, in this whole thing, we are telling you this to the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not that we're doing this for, um, you know, views or popularity or anything else. No, you think I, I signed up for all this hardship and tracking? Not only that, the devices, um, all my devices emit you know, electronic frequencies that give me headaches and all kinds of stuff. So I have to turn them off sometimes just because I can't, I can't function. So you want to, you think I signed up for that? Oh, this is so fun. <laughs> well, I did sign up for it and it is fun. But I'm just telling you about the things that I've been through to tell that I've suffered. So the Apostle Paul gave us a list of all the things he suffered. And I'm no Apostle Paul. You know, he died four times and was imprisoned and all that. So all you people that speak against the Apostle Paul will give me your list of suffering. You can't because nothing's happened. Okay, maybe someone in, on, on YouTube said not nice things about your comment or something. Oh, your poor baby. Wait till you're poisoned, okay? Some of you have been poisoned. Some of you, and you don't even know it. <laughs> you think you got the virus. No, man, you were targeted. They know exactly who all you are. And they gave it to you specifically to see, okay, if, if you have the seal or not. If you have the seal, you're not going to get the virus. All right. So anyway, our first one is the state of Israel. State of Israel, 1948. Okay. Until 62 weeks is Mashiach. So 62 weeks plus 
1948 is the year 2010. So the Messiah, the Prince, is the book of Esther. In the book of Esther, the king sits upon the throne, okay? When the king sits upon the throne, that is precisely the book of Esther, chapter one, verse one, and the year 2010, okay? Now, the apocalypse lasts 14 years, okay? Joseph had his dream, and he said there's seven good years, seven bad years. What's that 14 years? Jacob had two wives. He had to serve seven years for one wife, seven years for the other. What is that? That's 14 years. Simply put, the apocalypse, the revealing, begins when the Lamb sits upon the throne in 2010. Seven years later, okay, unto Mashiach the Prince will be 62 weeks and seven weeks. Seven plus 2010 is 2017. That's the start of the tribulation. That's what the interpretation is, okay? Now, the weeks in Daniel are years, okay? You can see that. It's a, unto your, it says, Daniel, there'll be 70 weeks. Well, in Daniel chapter 9, verse 1, Daniel understood the years would be 70 years per Jeremiah. So those 70 weeks are 70 years. So when it says weeks, that's the feast of weeks, which happens one time every year in the third month. Okay? So when it says 62 weeks, those are 62 feast of weeks. Each time a feast of weeks happen, happens once a year. So those are 62 years. Okay? So it gives us 2010. That gives us the prophecy of the uh, king in Esther. His name is Ahasuerus, okay? Historically, he's also known as Xerxes. So that's one king, one timeline, okay? There's another timeline of another king called Cyrus, okay? And Cyrus has a decree which begins a counting of another king. Now, these kings, there's actually four kings talked about in Daniel chapter 11 and verse 2 it says there will be four kings. So what this means is that prophetically you measure time by kings. Now let's just explain this briefly. In the ancient times, there was no uh, uh, agreed upon all over the earth year. Every, every uh, empire, culture, society around the world measured their years by the king. Okay, how long has the king reigned? He's reigned for such and such. And the king before him reigned for such and such. So you measure time by the king. Now, of course, when we have the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, we now have a universal year. Okay, so now everybody has the same year. But in ancient times, the way you determine the year is by the king. Okay? So that period of time of... Christ, his first coming up into 2010 was that period of time. Now we enter a new uh, coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, and this new era is also determined by the king. Okay, so the king begins the counting of the years. The counting of the years begins with these different kings. Okay, so in the book of Esther, it begins the counting of the years. Okay, 2010, unto Mashiach, the coming. So the, Christ, the coming of Christ happens over a 14-year period beginning in the year 2010. Okay? We'll go over the notes and explain that a little more. But we want you to get this concept of time being measured by the king. You're just used to the same time, okay? But you don't really think that the year we all say, we say 2010, we're talking about the king. Okay, we've determined that year based by Christ in his first coming. So your university over the whole earth is saying this is the year of the king. That's why the Jews have other names for it, because they don't want to recognize Jesus Christ as king. So that is critical for you to understand. I just told you the great mystery, okay, that everyone thinks they know, all right? They don't. It's that simple. That's our first point. Now, we do have notes. We're going to go through the rest of the notes and show you our other four biblical proofs of the start of the tribulation. So, again, we have the story of Joseph. Joseph talked about seven good years, seven fat cows, and seven lean years. And we have Jacob. He had seven years to serve for Leah and seven years to serve for Rachel. So, just like the time period spoken of, 
in the prophecy with Joseph and Jacob. The same thing is in the apocalypse or revealing of the Lord Jesus Christ. So our first sign, 1948, from 1948, we add 62 years. We come to the year 2010, the year of Ahasuerus in the book of Esther. So that is the anointed king sitting on the throne. Then that's Daniel chapter nine says there'll be 62 weeks and seven weeks. So 62 weeks is the feast of weeks and 62 years. And from seven years from the 62 years, we come to 2017. This is the start of the seven year tribulation. And we come to another king. His name is Cyrus. And we'll talk a little bit about Cyrus later, but this uh, prophecy in Daniel says 62 weeks and seven weeks. All right. That gives us the start. Those 62 and seven weeks gives us a start from establishing the state of Israel to the tribulation period. Okay. This is the midpoint. This is the second seven years. Okay. Now, number two, proof number two that the biblical uh, text shows us exactly when the tribulation period starts. You see our sword pointing to the woman of Revelation chapter 12, verse 1. So you can see the prophecy. There shall be a sign in the heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, and around her head a crown of ten, of, excuse me, twelve stars. So that is a sign that took place in the heavens on September 22nd, 2017. Okay? So that is a sign that tells us that that verse in the Bible in Revelation chapter 12 actually physically happened on a precise date. Then what it says is she goes from that date in Revelation 12, from that date then, Revelation 12 verse 6 says she goes into the wilderness 1,260 days. So that's three and a half years. Then it says that she's given two wings of an eagle for a time, times and a half a time. That's another three and a half years. So when you have that sign take place, Revelation 12, you have a period of time of seven years. Okay? You understand that? Any questions? <laughs> this is how simple this is. All right? Proof number two, the Revelation 12 sign proved the start of the tribulation, the tribulation seven-year period. Okay? Now, you can see another thing over here. You see how it says August 21st. All right? Now, our, our third proof of the tribulation is the solar eclipse that was over America, over Babylon. All right? What was the significance of that? is that you see it was August 21st, 2017, marking again the same beginning period of this seven years. Because after this, we know that there is an X that will be over America, right? Well, what's the next one? The next one that's a solar eclipse over America that will form this X pattern over America is April 8th, 2024. Well, obviously what you have is a seven year period. You have seven years between August 21st, 2017 and April 8th, 2018. So this is our third proof as part of the uh, menorah and the almond blossoms. OK, so we'll explain this a little bit later, but all of the uh, eclipses that transpire over a certain period of time shows us exactly where certain prophecies are fulfilled, okay? Now, it's this type of thing that if you study prophecy, you say, oh, Leela and I studied prophecy for 40 years. Well, 20 years ago, did you know about a lunar tetrad? No, you never heard of such a thing. Well, it's very, very significant. A lunar tetrad is four sequential blood moons, full uh, blood moons taking place over the time period of the feast for several years. In this case, uh, three years, 2014, 2015, 2016. Now, we're going to explain that uh, a little bit later. But within these eclipses, we have uh, further proof of the tribulation starting August 21st, 
full solar eclipse over America in a seven-year period unto April 8th, 2024. All right? Now, something else that we have are certain timetables. I'm not going to explain this whole timetable to you because it, it would take too much time. I'm just going to go over it briefly. Daniel talks about these prophecies and dates. Leland, you're setting dates. No, the Bible set the dates, not me. Did I put, did I put the sun, moon, and stars in the sky and make this happen? No. Did I make a solar eclipse? No. I'm just reading the information just like I'm reading the words on this page, which tell you precisely when the tribulation starts. Okay? So this same precise date, September 22nd, 2017, is also proved by something called Daniel's Timeline. Daniel's Timeline has a trigger event in July 25th, 2015, that starts the counting of the tribulation period. Okay? So from that date, you count 790 days, and it tells you when the tribulation starts. So on the same precise date, it tells us when the tribulation starts. Not only that, it continues to tell us the major details of the prophecy, including the daily sacrifice, um, other things about like the peace deal, uh, the mark of the beast. All of these things are understood by certain prophecies, some of which are related to eclipses. All right and the abomination of desolation. So Daniel talks about in his timeline, a trigger event which would start the tribulation. All right, so we know what that is. Then we have other trigger events that take place. Uh, and they're marked by eclipses and markers in Daniel's timeline. So for example, November 10th, 2021 is the abomination of desolation, also marked with a partial lunar eclipse November 18th in the year 2021, okay? So Daniel's timeline also tells us that in the end, you can see it over here, that there will be, there is an Armageddon. So Daniel's timeline gives us 2,520 days, okay? Which is seven years. So this is our next witness. What do we have? 1948. We have the woman clothed with the sun. We have the solar eclipses. Now we have Daniel's timeline. That's number four. Okay, those are four proofs thus far of uh, the tribulation period starting 2,520 days. Okay? Now, let's do our next proof. Our next proof is the book of Esther. We mentioned the book of Esther. How, when the king sits upon his throne... Okay, his name was Ahasuerus. He sits on his throne in the first year of the king. And then, after three years, okay, he holds a feast of 180 days. This is extremely significant. I want you to get this. So when he sits on a throne, it tells us there's a period of three and a half years. If you know anything about Bible prophecy at all, you know how important three and a half years is. It's what? It's 42 months. It's a time, times, and a half a time. It's 1,260 days. Okay? 42 months. All of that is described as three and a half years. Now, in Esther, it says three years and 180 days. This is specific. So, the book of Esther gives us the calendar. This calendar clearly is 30 days in each month. That's 1,260 days and three and a half years. Understand? All right, good. So, why is this important? Because when the king sits on the throne, he has a feast, a six-month feast, after sitting on the throne three months, so that's three and a half years, right? Okay. Then what happens is he has a seven-day feast. This seven-day feast is a leap cycle. It's giving us information on the calendar. But don't worry about that. Worry about this. Then what it says is during that seven-day feast, he brings the queen. Vashti is the queen. She's asked to come to the feast. She refuses. Okay, that's the church. The church refused the king's command. Okay, so that's the apostate church. They, don't, they can't tell you anything I'm saying because they're just like the days of Noah, buying, selling, living their lives. They have not sold out for Lord Jesus Christ to find out the actual time. Okay, so when Vashti is divorced... It says the king was angry. All right? Now, 
the whole apocalypse is going very, very different than what you think. Okay? For example, when Joseph, he sat on the throne, okay, just like just like Ahasuerus, he sat on the throne, he was second in the kingdom, that's just like the Lord Jesus Christ, he's running the show, all right? Now, when the brothers came, what happened? Was he, was he happy? Was he like, oh, I'm so, yes, he was. He was so burning inside, he, he had to go into another room and cry. But did he show that to the brothers? No. He tested the brothers because they betrayed him. They were evil and wicked and he tested them to see if they have become faithful over the time. So, we are Vashti. We have been divorced. He has separated us. He, the king is angry. Okay? Then, one, because none of, none of us prepared for him. All right? So, none of us prepared for the king. So, the king divorced us. Then, the seals are opened. So, when the Vashti, Vashti is divorced, the seals of revelation are open. Why? Because it says it's the throne of the Lamb and the wrath of the Lamb in Revelation 6, 16. So, like it or not, the king is not pleased with you. I know that's hard for you to believe, but this is what it says. It's not for several years that Joseph tells the brothers who he actually is. And Lord Jesus Christ is the same way. You actually don't know who he is. You don't recognize his coming. All right? That's the problem. It's a heart issue. The problem is not the information I'm telling you. The problem is you. All right? So, we have been divorced. Vashti said, the king is angry. Then it opens the seals of revelation. Okay? The horse riders are released. The seal, the lamb opens the seals. Okay? And that's the blood moons. Okay? Then, now this is all our fifth proof, is the book of Esther. Okay? So, all of these agree perfectly with the book of Revelation. You would have never thought the book of Esther proves the timing of the book of Revelation, but it does, okay? So, the lamb opens the seals. Now, when the lamb opens the seals, then what happens is he, he begins, he, he goes away. Now, this is historic. This actually happened. We actually know where Xerxes went. He went on a mission. He came back. And when he came back, he said, all right, I'm not mad anymore. What should we do? And he asked the princes what to do. And they said, well, we'll, we'll uh, gather a bunch of virgins throughout the province to replace the queen. Okay? So this is the story of Esther. So Esther, the decree goes out to gather virgins in the Shushan Palace. Okay? So Esther comes and she must be prepared over a period of six months. Six months of oil, six months of sweet odors. It's a total of one year. Now, just like the story in Esther lines up perfectly with certain eclipses, okay? There are certain eclipses that transpired September 1st, 2016, uh, February 16th, 2017, and then the final one, August 21st, completes that year of Esther's preparation, okay? So, everything in the book of Esther agrees perfectly with this timetable in the eclipses. I'm not making this stuff up. This is what the Bible says, so, what happens is Esther becomes crowned in the seventh year. So, you can see we're having, the, the years are very easy to understand. They go with the Gregorian years. So, 2017 is the seventh year. In the seventh year, Esther is crowned. When she's crowned, it's the same point by which the woman in Revelation 12 is crowned. Okay? So, this lines up perfectly with the book of Revelation, as you can see. Now, when that happens... Then you can see Revelation 12, then the woman goes in the wilderness 1,260 days. This begins now the trumpets. Because the book of Esther proves to us that when the king holds this feast, okay, it's 180 days. That's six months. Now this proves to us that every seal, every trumpet, and every bowl is 180 days. Let me say that again. The book of Esther proves us with this 180-day feast that every seal, every trumpet, and bowl is six months, 180 days, okay? They all happen on a precise schedule. Now, once that schedule is understood, many of you that have watched this channel for a while, you begin to realize, Leland, the things you said are happening. Yes, they are. Now, it's not my wisdom 
I'm not smart enough to figure this out. I'm called to this. Okay? I'm called to do this by God, to tell you this, to show you this information. All right? Now, what happens in the, after Esther is crowned, then we, we see at the end of the book of Esther, it says, in the twelfth year, can you see that? That's a twelve. In the twelfth year, Haman and his ten sons, they are killed. Okay? Now, Haman we know to be the Antichrist, clearly. Okay, so he has 10 sons, just like in Revelation, there are 10 kings. So Haman is definitely the son of perdition. Now he's killed in year 12 on a precise date in Purim. So the Antichrist is also killed. All right. And we know that he, prior to that, he has power 42 months. So if we take Purim and Haman and his 10 sons in year 12 in the Feast of Purim, and then we go back. You can see what it says. Go back 42 months. So you take this time period, you go back 42 months, and you have Haman, the Antichrist, is revealed. This is what we told you guys. On this precise date, on August 24th, 2019, the Antichrist will be revealed. We revealed that we said that to you before the U.S. elections of 2016. We said that in August of 2016, before the elections, we said the Antichrist will be revealed in August 24th, 2019, three years later. Well, it happened. Donald Trump said, I am the chosen one. On his Twitter account, he posted the second coming of God the king of Israel, fulfilling the prophecy on the precise day, on August 21st. Now you might say, well, Leland, it's August 21st. You said August 24th. Well, Purim lasts over a few days, guys. It depends on where you are. It's actually like two, you might consider it two, maybe three days. Okay, so this, this prophecy happened. All right, that's how we knew. Many of the things that we're telling you here, we tell you in advance, Okay, watch for something like this to happen, and it happened. So that's how we can say that some of the things that have happened within this period, we can tell you in advance. We're telling you now, all right? So we had the daily sacrifice being taken away. We saw the last daily sacrifice take place in Israel. We were there to witness it. It was Passover 2019, all right? We saw the peace deal. It happened, okay, around the peace deal. Uh, within a day or two was a lunar eclipse, January 10th. Um, January 20th was, is um, in the year 2020. Okay? So now, according to the prophecy, just like it says, now we have the mark of the beast. Okay? So all of these things have to happen. All right? So the book of Esther gives us our fifth witness, okay, of actual events taking place, prophecy being fulfilled that we're in fact in the tribulation period, okay? Now let's mention another one that's very noteworthy, okay? You can see that we have the UN decree to form the state of Israel it was November 29, 1947, okay? So that was a decree, that's, a, that's before 1948, there was a UN decree to establish a Jewish state. We didn't know it was Israel, they didn't say that yet, all right? So they, had this decree. Now, if we go and we count, it says 70 years That is the Cyrus decree. Okay, so that's the decree. And after those seven years, we have King Cyrus. Now, this is another king. Just like you have Esther, you have Cyrus. So, we announce this, all right? The Cyrus decree, the 24th day of the ninth month. That was December 5th, 2017. All right, so also, Cyrus, as king, he is recognized. Now, he is the Mashiach, it says. Now, we don't believe Donald Trump is the Mashiach. We don't believe Donald Trump is Cyrus. We believe he's a false Cyrus. Everything we're telling you is that the Lord Jesus Christ is fulfilling these prophecies, okay? So, this was a critical time period for the prophecies related to Cyrus, all right? Now, the enemies of Christ they can corrupt these things. They can take them and use them and deceive the Christians and say things like, you know, you know, this, this person is Cyrus. All right. But that was an actual decree and that, that fulfilled on a precise date. 
All right. Now, we are presently in the third year of Cyrus. Now, this is Daniel 10. Now, those of you that follow this channel, we're going to break down Daniel chapter 10 because now we're in the time of certain prophecies that need to be released. It's way too much information that I can tell you in this video, but be patient. We're going to go through a series of messages to show you the prophecies of Daniel 10, 11, and 12. It's a lot of information, okay? But just so you know, what you're looking at is we have Cyrus. This is talked about in the book of Daniel. All right? You can see Daniel chapter 10. The Daniel timeline is in Daniel chapter 8. Okay? And then we also have, this is called a menorah. It has lamps on it. Okay? Those lamps are the seven archangels, including Michael. Okay, so Daniel talks about Michael. Daniel talks about Gabriel. They are the seven archangels. All right? Now, you can see throughout these videos, we show you these diagrams. And these prove to us exactly the timing of the apocalypse. We're not going to spend a lot of time here, guys. We're just telling you that we have these things we have been announcing to the people for many years. These diagrams we released to the people almost six years ago. Now, you can learn this. It's detailed, but you can learn this. Once you learn the concept, then you can realize it. It's like a clock, okay? You just look at a clock and you see what time it is. These are clocks. But many of you will say, well, how did you come up with this information? How did you make the clock? Now, when you look at a watch, you don't take it apart to figure out how the person made it. You just read the time. So for many of you, you can just read the time. But if you would like to see how the watch works, I have videos on this, many videos to explain the details of how these mechanisms work, how these clocks work. Okay? But basically... We have the first seven years detailed here. Then we have the seven years, okay, of the tribulation period. It is seven years, clearly from Revelation 12. You have three and a half years after the Revelation 12 sign of the period of time of the trumpets and the bowls. So yes, we are in the time of the trumpets in the seventh trumpet. So we have lots of videos. We'll have links in the description field to show you the videos describing this okay and we're going to have a whole series on daniel chapter 10 11 12 and release more of this information to you so thanks for watching and god bless you